Eamon Khan here for seconds out with uh, boxing favourite Maxi Hughes. I feel like one of those troubleshooters that you get on the end of the phone, Maxi, getting your internet sorted on your side, but internet aside, you good? Yeah, I'm good, mate. Yeah, yeah. You need the internet as well uh, to keep uploading to the new Maxi Hughes YouTube channel. I know that people are stopping <laughs> you in the streets now and saying, is that, is that Maxi? Is that Maxi? But what, what guys yeah, are you doing it. that side of things? Um. It was my wife that encouraged me to do it. You know, with I, I found myself watching. Obviously, Tony Jeffries is um, he's he does really well his channel. Mm. Watch a lot of Tony's stuff. Well, they do like boxing content on YouTube, who are not actually boxers who've never fought, and you know, and they're doing extremely well from it. And I'm like, I've got twenty years experience, you know, and I have fought at a high level you know, the highest level of professional boxing. So I've got, you know, I've got a lot of knowledge and a lot of insight and stuff. So my wife sort of encouraged me, and, you know, it's sort of, a pro, you know, I am in the, the the latter part of my career. So I suppose, you know, if I've got nothing to lose by trying. So it's almost like teeing up a little bit of summer to go into retirement with um, as well, you know, as well as, it's self-promotion, isn't it? So, you know, getting myself out to a broader reach. Um, I have a good video video guy who is, is doing some for me currently, you know, like behind the scenes training, like, because Golden Boy are not sending no cameraman out for me. And obviously, they're only doing Zapita. So, yeah, I've got my own and I'm doing my own investing in myself. So because the wife is pushing you to do this, will you get her on the channel like Frotch is doing with his wife? She helps record all my videos, yeah. Is so it? just um I'll I'll see yeah, I'll see you one day. Like we've got camera coming tomorrow, so she's gonna have to appear because her camera's doing like you know, a day in the life, so she's gonna have to appear on it. So what so the type of content you're looking for is like behind the scenes stuff, just really kind of dialing in and what you're gonna be doing in fight weeks and heading up to the subpoena fight in, in the near future as well. A bit of all sorts, you know, obviously it is a boxing channel but like the video the, the i put there's only two videos on there um as of now um one was just an intro but the one i, I explained now people still thought i were matchroom boxing you know i, I go to the shows mm. so getting asked a lot about it um oh you know why why are eddie doing this way and i'm like i'm not actually with eddie you know i, I didn't, I didn't re-sign my new contract so you know that video was done particularly well it's nearly at 20,000 views and you know me subs it's making me subscribers go up so I'm doing all sorts of content you know obviously doing my own promotion like behind the scenes day in the life and me training and stuff but the bits that about the business that I've learned working with different promoters you know I've also got a couple of tutorials recorded and ready to go so yeah it's going to be all, all sorts of boxing Max, I'm one of those people who are guilty of watching a channel and then not clicking subscribe. So what I'm doing right now is I'm actually going to press the subscribe button right yep. now. Uh, Don't to hit that subscribe button, yeah. There you go. It's done right <laughs> there for you, Maxi. Uh, very much Thank a good you. watch and much appreciated for the content as well. Much appreciated for this interview too. And I want to get to March 16th. It's a pay day. It seems like you're on the tough road again, Maxi. No one can ever say that you've ducked a fight or don't want the tough fights. But to pay day seems like a tough one as well too, Maxi. You know, I've looked at, you know, they're all tough fights, aren't they, at, at this level? You know, especially when you're, you know, I've said in other interviews, I haven't been given, I haven't been, I haven't been picked out of the hat for this. Mm. You know, I've my place is very much earned. You know, I'm here, I'm here on merit. The IBF have ordered me versus a Peter for the final eliminator, eliminator. So, you know, I have to, these are the fight. These are the fights that I want. I want to be ordered into these fights, and whoever it's going to be, you know, it's they're not going to be easy, are they? Um, but yeah, when when I do get to the top and get where I want to be, you know, I can I can say I, I did it the hard way. You know, I had to travel, which you know I don't mind traveling, but you know, like you say, I did it the hard way and and took all all challenges that were that were put in front of me. Was Zapeda someone who's been particularly on your radar for the last couple of years or so? Or is, is he someone just that's just come into your kind of real thinking in the last um, year? 
I'd seen him over the last couple of years, yeah. So since he was signed by Golden Boy, um, and that, I'd, I'd, I always presume any any one of the top lightweights the the paths could cross. So I always keep my eye out on on who's fighting who, and you know have a watch of that. And obviously he's promoted by Golden Boy and boxes on the zone. So it, it, the, the, his footage and his fights were there to see. So you know, obviously him being a lightweight and a lot of noise around him, I just watched anyway. So. It it always you know is someone I've watched especially the last couple of fights that he's had anyway so yeah um, and obviously as soon as it got put to me I thought yeah I know I know what he's about I know what this kid's about you know I didn't have to go and research and double check the way he fights you know what you see is what you get with him you're no stranger to fighting tough Mexican fighters do you feel you can take a lot from the fight with Strafon many were kind of feeling that. He'd probably go through you and you were able to turn the tables and put on a real good performance against him. Do you feel you can take a lot from that and apply it to the Zapata fight? Yeah, I could take little bits from there. Um, and like I say, it's the the they're built very similar, the Mexicans, you know. Um, you know, they're very tough. They will keep fighting till the very end. And my sparring partner at the minute, uh, Alex Dilmangari, He's he's been brilliant sparring for this, and he he actually spent I think two to two and a half years in Mexico at the beginning of his career. Um, and you know he, he trained out of the Romanza gym, Nacho Beristain's gym. So he's he's very much known, and he, you know, and he follows a lot of Mexicans. He obviously built relationships up there, so he knows a lot about him. He knows particularly about that sort of camp. So getting um you know just bits of information on how training camps sort of go over there and you know just like little bits of information of, of what to expect and sort of stuff like that so yeah I'm, I'm i'm going into a fight fully fully confident and and knowing that i can i'm capable and i can get the job done does the mentality change when you're fighting not a boxer this time around but someone who has a level of power which at the levels that he's been in is he's shown that he can get those finishes do you have to kind of switch up how you prepare for him in your mind uh we just concentrate on what we're going to do mm. you know concentrate on myself and we work you know we'll, we'll do a good mix of all sorts of scenarios and prep you know and and stuff in our preparation you know so um I'll I will be the best you know, physically and mentally prepared. And I think a lot of it um, is is about how mentally prepared you are um, for certain fights. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm prepared myself for, you know, like with the, I mean, the Strafon fight wasn't easy, but, mm. you know, I made it look easy. And and this could be another one of them fights, you know, is, is like, you know, is a very much come forward, very aggressive fighter. Which you know could suit my style and how how I, I implement my tactics. I could make it very easy. You'll prepare diligently on your end, but once the final bell goes, it's in the judges' hands. Now I I imagine that you will have some feeling or wariness as to it being in the judges' hands again, being the away fighter on the show. Yeah, there's always that worry. But I don't want to try and focus any too much energy on that because you know you can can end up down a deep, a deep dark negative hole and worrying about that and you know take me out of the fight. So, you know I've I med med sort of made me peace a bit with what happened in Oklahoma last year. This is a new fight, a new, um, you know, a different state. I have asked my team, you know, Debella. If who the judges are, I don't think they've been selected yet, but as soon as they are selected, you know, we'll know. Um, but yeah, as long as I'm prepared, I go in that ring and and I do my job, you know, it is what it is. Uh, you know, I don't, again, like I said, I don't want to think too much on that, you know, especially being negative around it, you know, I don't want to let it take my focus, take my energy. Fair enough. I respect that. Last time out over in America, though, whilst you might not have got the win you deserved, um, you did bring back a big American cowboy type hat. What are you bringing back from Vegas? Um, probably more than likely summer. Um, we are going to be staying out there. My wife, wife and kids are coming over 
and we're going to have a week out there after you know to to enjoy the place and you know get to get to see some places that we've always wanted to see you know we've never been there so it's a place we'd always like to have visited and an experience so i'm sure some will be coming back hopefully with the win as well too maxi couple of final things Absolutely, from myself yeah. loma cambosis is on the horizon firstly you get this win over Zapeda as you plan to do. Will you insist on being ringside? Uh, yeah, I'll try. Obviously, it's a long, long way, isn't it? Australia, um, expensive flight. So I'll be straight into Lou and say, look, I'm mandatory. Uh, does Top Rank want to pay for me to um, fly out there? You know, do the do they all getting in the ring after to to start building up the next fight? So because the winner of that will have to face me in the next fight. So. You know, it makes sense for me to be there. I'd, I'd like to be there and watch it first hand. Um, mm-hmm. Make some for, for some good content for my YouTube channel, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I'd, I'd love to be ringside for it. Um, so we'll so we'll see. I'll get make sure I get job done on Zapida, and then I'll be straight into Lou to uh, to get me over there. Who do you think gets the job done in Loma and Combosis? I can't see anything else than a and a Lomachenko win. I know he won't. He's not obviously being active. By the time that fight comes around, it'll be 13 months. He's been out of the ring, so unless Father Time seriously caught up with him, uh, I can't see I can't see him getting beat. With the promise of Cambosa saying he'll give you the rematch, do you kind of want Cambosa to win? Um, I, I mean, I, I'm really easy. I don't mind. You know, I. I'd love that fight again to I mean I did I showed everybody that I'm I've got George's number you know I'd love to do it again and make, and make sure that the W goes on my name um but at the same time I'd love to share the ring with Lomachenko mm-hmm. uh, you know I have been a fan of his um of it years so um I'd love that opportunity as well Moving on, your uh, gym mate, Josh Warrington, appears not to be getting the fight with Lee Wood now. Uh, have you spoke to Josh? You must be disappointed if he's, if that fight's not going to materialise. Yeah, I think it's it's good in for both lads, isn't it? It's the, I think it's the biggest fight out there for both of them. Uh, biggest money fight out there. Um, I've only, yeah, so I've only just like, about the, the city ground scenario that, I think something's gone wrong with that, that they, they're they not able to put it on, something like that. But, yeah, it's it's disappointing and, and it'll be disappointing for both teams that it's um, it's not. I mean, it needs to, they need to get into Eddie because the fight would sell wherever wherever it is. You know, it's a big fight. So wherever it is in UK, you know, it'd sell. You know, get it on a neutral ground, Manchester or maybe even London or whatever. You know what I mean? So... There's plenty of places that that could go and sell. I agree with you. Uh, you've also been in an interesting position where you've been sparring uh, the likes of Taylor and Catchell as the two gear up for their rematch. I'm going to put you on the spot, although I think I saw a previous interview was on IFL that you kind of stuck on the mm. fence on this one. So I imagine the same thing. But uh, could you pick or split the two? Uh, not as of yet. I've actually that's what's going out tonight on my YouTube Ooh, okay. channel, my own my yeah. own preview. But um, yeah. I can't split them at the minute, you know. They're both they're both top level fighters, and it's it's who can deal with it at night. And obviously, this one it's a particular grudge match with a lot of animosity there, so emotions can run high. And it's whoever cannot let them emotions cloud, you know, their their game plan and their focus, you know, which is you know, I would imagine for them to it's going to be quite tough. So whoever can keep the self under control and, and especially whoever can get off to a, a good start I think has the better chance of, of victory what was the I'm not asking you to say about how the spars went but what was the difference between spar and both of them um obviously the the both obviously the, the build the, the both south paws which is obviously very similar but they built different you know Josh Josh were taller when I sparred in that what first time I'd met him I didn't realise how tall he was. Mm. Um, whereas Jax is oh, taller than me. He's got very long arms, and you know how how he's how his stance is in the ring um, makes himself like like bigger. If if that makes sense. So yeah, um, they're both they're both very different stylistically, 
um, you know, which which makes it makes it interesting. And obviously, it were a brilliant fight that first one, entertaining to watch. So, um, as a boxing fan, I'm very much uh, looking forward to it. As, you know, especially with it only being down road from from us um, in Leeds. Imagine you and uh, Jack a, a bit to bond over, considering some of the way some of your fights have gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Finally, Maxi, I would leave the final word with you uh, in the fight with William Zapeda. What happens? You know, I, I say it about all my fights. However, however it comes, I will just ensure that my hand is raised and we come away from Vegas with that win and the mandatory position. Um, big smiles on our faces. So, um, yeah, however it comes... Um, I know what Zapeda's coming with, and and I'm ready. I'm ready for that. I'm ready, physically, mentally prepared for what he's coming with. I'm going to handle him and get the job done and game and take his O. That's what I'm, that's what we're coming back from Las Vegas with Zapeda's undefeated record. <laughs> there you go. Good way to leave it, Maxi. <laughs> pleasure's all mine. Thank you for speaking seconds out, sir. All the best on fight night as well, too.